Hey, this is Ben Solomon and welcome to this episode of the Techno Leadership Show. In this episode, I'm going to be sharing something that I learned from thinking holistically about a business and learning from exit interviews of staff who are non-technical staff to then put in measures in place to improve retention and to get better outcomes for the business as a whole. So years ago, about now what, five years ago <laughs> probably, I was working in an organization as the tech manager and at that stage what we noticed the year I started there we had a certain amount of attrition. So I was like, yep, yeah, okay, it's probably normal, but having been in the same industry in a different org- in different organizations before that, I knew that level of attrition wasn't normal. The other thing that I had to consider from my standpoint was the the culture within the organization was really good, very supportive leadership. So I was at a loss to understand why we had that level of attrition. So that, you know, opened my eyes and I was like thinking about it going, I wonder what's going on. Is there something we can do from a tech perspective to support some initiative that will help uh, improve retention and reduce attrition? So I started speaking to some of the leaders in the organization, just trying to understand what's going on. Um, has the trend been like this? Attrition is concerning for all leaders and like even um, me being in a management um, level and not being in charge of, you know, a bigger group, I was in charge of the technical department, it still was something that concerned me. I was like, oh, what's going on? And later when I went into executive leadership roles, I understood how much more that becomes an important consideration when you're looking at everything holistically from a leadership perspective. But even in that management role, I'd seen the culture was fine. There's nothing wrong with the culture. Very supportive managers and leaders, very good workers, people who are um, staff members are fantastic in what they did. Um, Being the kind of organization that we will be attracted to some of the best um, of uh, staff and leaders. So, but we had this attrition problem and I'm like thinking, what is going on here? The other thing we had as a positive was we were one of the most technologically advanced organization because of the work my predecessors had done as well as uh, that was continued during my time and after we ensured that we had the best possible technological tools and systems in place to be able to support the work that our our staff and other departments were doing and then When speaking to executive leaders, I then found out, you know, in exit interviews, the staff were finding the fact that our technology, the use of technology in the organization was up here compared to other organizations in the same industry that they were coming from. And that made me think and I went, okay, so there is a disparity there and the technology executive leaders and leadership in that sort of space just did not have the time capacity to be able to run trainings and support as much as they would have liked to. So I saw this gap exist. So when I saw the gap exist, I went, oh, okay, so there is something that we can do, but what is it going to look like? took me a bit of time to think about it. Um, Actually, as part of a completely different Um, a workshop and seminar that I was attending got an idea about having some form of an onboarding training and support system in place for staff that were already in the organization as well as staff who were coming into the organization so that they could upskill much more smoothly and have the support that they needed to be able to achieve at the level of confidence in themselves and their ability to navigate the technology landscape that we had effectively. 
So finally, after a lot of discussions, um, put a proposal in to do like a test, managed to um, get funding approved for that and got the test system in place. The technology that we used for the system wasn't great. It was SharePoint based, which was clunky as it is, but the concept worked really well. We were onboarding um, staff much better. The, we put in the right training and the right amount with the right kind of support in the onboarding platform, which meant that they could upskill themselves and improve their confidence using the tools that we had in the organization to achieve the outcomes that they were after. So once the concept was proved, it was then easy to put in a proper platform that then continued to improve our retention. All of this came about because I asked one question. Do we have exit interviews with the people who are leaving? And what is the common thread that we're finding in there? And the common thread that we found was that they didn't get the right amount of support with the technologies and solutions that we had in place and that they felt um, like they didn't have the confidence to utilize it properly and get the outcomes that they were there to get for the business. So that then helped us put things in place to be able to support them and help them with gaining that confidence which then downstream uh, meant that they were more satisfied being there which again downstream meant that they stayed with the organization for longer and contributed for a lot longer. So having exit interviews, whether it's for your team, team members leaving the organization, or asking your executive leaders on what's going on with the whole organization and the exit interviews that they're getting out of there to see if there's any commonalities that you can help with would play a significant part in helping the overall organization. When you do those, these exit interviews properly with staff who are leaving from your team as a manager, as an executive leader of the technology aspect, it'll help you understand what's going on as well. I mean, I personally prefer to constantly have an open dialogue with my team members that I can support them in a way that they enjoy their work but it also means like if I'm having constant dialogue with them if I know that they're not enjoying their work and they're looking for something different I can support them in on the way out and in the exit interview usually there's positive things saying look I found that I can, there's no opportunity in this business to grow because I've hit my ceiling there's no other positions there's no way for growth because of um, funding or whatever it might be which is where I've chosen this way and I'm going to another organization at a higher position so that I, I can continue my career growth and which means I can then you know put that in my report to management and say hey we've lost a fantastic resource because we didn't make a role available when we could have because we've expanded this much we're trying to cut costs or we're doing whatever and not getting to keep our best stuff. And again, it's feedback mechanisms that you can use and learn from and grow. I have tried my very best to be proactive with my staff so that I know that if there is an opportunity for me to do whatever I can to keep them in the organization, whether it's a increase in their salary or in better work conditions or a specific specialist position that they wanted to go into if there was that opportunity and the need in the organization I would do whatever I can to organize for that but if it wasn't then I was also very open and helped them to figure out what their next step should be and I supported them as best as I could in terms of resources in terms of suggestions on what would help them get to that point and then um, even helping them with preparing for interviews and things like that and helping them go from there. As a leader, you can take this on board if you'd like to. You're having an open dialogue and being there for your team means that you can support them for their 
overall career growth, which then helps them have a fulfilling career and a fulfilling time when they're working in your team as well. Like when they know that you're supporting them and being there for them, you are their biggest advocate and that you're supporting them to potentially, you know, in three or six months time, find the next role up and you're giving them all the resources, the support, the care that they need to get there while they're in the organization. One, they do their work out of real loyalty and desire to do the best possible work, but they also know that you have their best outcome in mind. It's not about just keeping you there. It's not just about, you know, um, trying to, um, you know, just maintain status quo, but it's about helping them get what their goals are out of their career and their life. So at the end of the day, being preeminent and being their best, highest advocate is the most important thing to do. And what you learn from exit interviews will then help improve your leadership, improve your team culture, and improve the retention as best as possible in your teams. So hopefully that helps you out. Again, it needs a lot of open-mindedness, ability to let our ego die, and actually listen to our people to have effective exit interviews and actually learn something positive and utilize that to further improve the organization. I've seen organizations where exit interviews consisted of coming, uh, you know, speaking to a person saying, yep, yeah, thanks for coming. Thanks for being here for X number of years. And that's it. And the person who's leaving feels completely unvalued, uncared for, and, um, you know, all the contribution that they brought to the organization, they just feel like was wasted. All the years of work that they put behind what they've done, they feel wasted. And I don't think that's the best way to for anyone to leave the organization, no matter what situation and what condition under which they're leaving the organization. Always there's an opportunity to learn from these exit interviews and utilize that to further improve the organization, the culture, and the outcomes that we can get as a business, as well as for the people that are working for us. I wish you all the best in your journey as a tech professional, manager, and leader. If you like this episode, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button so that you're notified of future episodes as they are released. I look forward to talking to you in a future episode.